Please allow me to introduce the crew members. The prime crew commander of Soyuz MS-07 and commander of ISS Expedition 55, Anton Shkaplerov, Russia, and flight engineer Scott Tingle, USA, flight engineer 2 of the Soyuz vehicle, Norishigi Kanai, JAXA, Japan, backup crew, commander, Soyuz commander, and flight engineer of ISS Sergei Prokopiev, Roscosmos, Russia, flight engineer of the Soyuz MS and the flight engineer of ISS Alexander Gerst, Germany, flight engineer 2 of the Soyuz and flight engineer of ISS, Janet Epps, USA. And now let us start the press conference. Please, question number one. Hello. First of all, congratulations to the crew on being confirmed based on the panel recommendations. Anton Nikolaevich, what did you select as your zero-G indicator on the vehicle? And question number two to the Japanese crew member. Just wanted to say that you look excellent on the video. You are dressed very appropriately. And are you going to prepare any Japanese dishes when you get to the ISS? Thank you. Uh, is the mic working? First of all, thank you for coming here, all of you. It's a lot of people to be interested in uh, space, and I'm happy about it. And I'm hoping that you are going to convey to millions of people what we do here and what's the purpose of flying into space. First of all, the zero-g indicator, the toy that I'm going to take with me, Usually, it's a small toy that we take to understand that we are finally in zero-g. And nine minutes after the launch, it's a lot of vibration, it's not very comfortable, and uh, Finally, when we are in zero-g, we would like to know immediately that we are here. So we always take the toy to indicate to us that we are in zero-g. We hang it in front of our faces. So when you look at our launch, you will see the toy in front of our faces, it will be vibrating. But when we are in space, then the toy will be floating. And the first time it happens, well, for my colleagues, it will be their first time in space. They will be surprised. And when they see the toy floating, they will know that we are in space. And uh, we have a toy prepared for us. It's very small. It's a toy poodle. So I wanted to take it because we have a small dog. And the toy is going to go through the approval process. It is going to be checked out and documented. And it will remind me of home. Thank you for asking about Kimo. 
Sometimes we wear uh, special kimono for celebration, uh, like graduation, uh, wedding, etc. Today is a very special day for me, uh, having a press conference and a commission uh, with uh, crew members. So I wanted to show my respect to my crew members and uh, uh, all trainers in Tepeka. And talking about the Japanese food, uh, uh, JAXA provides me uh, lots of uh, Japanese space food. Uh, curry and rice and uh, uh, lots of uh, fish. I want to share uh, Japanese food with my crew members. Thank you. <laughs> Natalia Roscosmo Studio. I also would like to say congratulations. It's a great holiday for all of us, a great celebration for the prime crew and backup crew. And uh, we are going to follow your progress. The question to the prime crew, maybe it's not usual. A lot of young people are interested in space now, which is making us happy. And I'm a teacher, and I wanted to ask you, as a space professionals, you never stop learning. Do you have a secret when um, you do things that, and you don't want to do them? How do you make yourself to go on? How do you make yourself get up early and do things you don't want to do? so that you are successful and can go into space. Do you have any advice so that I can quote you and say cosmonauts and astronauts do it this way? Thank you for the good question, Natalia. I'm not sure what to say. To become a cosmonaut and to continue being a cosmonaut, it's very difficult. It's not just um, physical work, it's also a lot of mental work. We have to study a lot. Yesterday we had to go through exams, and when I took my examination paper, I had a flashback to my high school days. I still remember how I was learning, and I still continue learning every day. Everything keeps changing, and even though I'm flying into space for the third time, I had to study a lot for the last three years. I only had two weeks of vacation last year, and uh, it was very difficult to get that vacation time. To motivate yourself, I think you have to consider other people, not just yourself because so many people put their heart and soul into your training, into preparing you for what you're doing. You have to justify their hopes and the hopes of tens of thousands of people here on Earth, especially those who helped us here and supported us, and the hundreds of thousands of people who are watching us from the Earth. We want to justify their hopes. And in order to achieve any goal, not just flying into space, you have to apply yourself, even if you don't want to do anything. You have to do it. Otherwise, uh, we are not different from anyone else. It's just our profession to fly into space. And please tell your students that if they really want it, if they apply themselves, they can do it. They can be successful. Thank you. One more question. May I? Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, and that was well said uh, from Anton. Uh, there are literally tens of thousands of people working in this community. And they all work very hard. They all 
many of them work as many hours as we do. They, they study, they look at new. Um, so when we're, we're setting the goals and we're, we're working really hard and we start to feel a little bit of fatigue or a little bit of tiring, uh, I always think about all those folks doing the work to, to help us in the background. The magnificent uh, support from our families and friends and colleagues and especially the, uh, the trainers uh, at all of the uh, centers that we do our training. And that's it for me. I just want to want to make you all proud and do well for you. I was lucky because I have uh, great uh, crew members during uh, my training in Seteca. My wonderful crew members always help me, and uh, whenever possible, I try to help them. And uh, having uh, friends like these crew members uh, uh, who are who had uh, same goal, same dream, that helps a lot. Спасибо. Прошу, пожалуйста, НАСА. Beth Weisinger with NASA Television. Uh, first off, congratulations to you all for making it to this point in your training. Um, I have two questions, one for Scott Tingle and one for Jeanette Epps. Um, Scott Tingle, in addition to your work training in the military and as an astronaut, you are a maker. You have a passion for building things. Do you believe this might be useful in your stay aboard ISS? <laughs> I think so. Uh, I, there's, a, there's a lot of maintenance to do, there's a lot of servicing to do, and there's a lot of research to do. I love working with tools and I love putting stuff together so that things work for, uh, for, for good people. Uh, so yes, I, I think it'll be valuable. And Jeanette, you have worked in multiple extreme or remote environments. Do you anticipate that this might help you in your work as an astronaut aboard the International Space Station? So w working in different environments, um, in extreme environments, or even just working overseas, I do think um, will help me in space because um, one of the things that I was able to do was work with many different people and interact and be successful working with um, people from other countries and different things like that. So I think um, working in extreme environments as well, you kind of get a sense of um, how to stay safe how to keep your crew members safe. So there's a lot of things that you can gain in doing that. And I definitely think all of these skills help with operating in space as well. Hello, Alexei, the standard. And I wanted to congratulate you, first of all, on becoming officially the prime crew and the backup crew. The question to Scott and uh, Norishigi, how did the training go on the Soyuz? You are going to fly on the Soyuz for the first time. What were the difficulties during your training and uh, during training on the Soyuz simulator? And a separate question to Mr. Kanai. What experiments are you going to do on board the station? Experiments from Jackson. Uh, you're right. The, the training facilities here are fantastic, uh, as they are in the, at the other centers that we train. Uh, there's nothing like getting into a simulator to, to test your skills and to learn uh, efficient ways to work. The hard part uh, for me was with the multiple disciplines that we're trying to perfect uh, to, to have a good expedition on orbit was to just find enough time to really get into the details uh, to practice and to be confident uh, in all of the uh, areas. But at the end, in the end, all I had to do was listen to the best commander in the world. And Scott said everything for me also. And Scott for me also told me everything. Although this is my first space flight, uh, no problem, because we have a great instructor here, and we have a great uh, commander here. For Anton, he's, this is his uh, third flight, and uh, uh, first time to be a ISS commander. So uh, I'm not worried about the uh, space flight and uh, life in space station, because always follow Anton's direction, and everything should be fine. And talking about uh, Japanese uh, scientific researches, 
uh, I would point out a uh, protein crystallization experiment. Uh, this is a Russian-Japanese joint mission, and it started uh, even before uh, Japanese module was launched. And also, uh, in Japanese module, we have a special robot uh, that is helping uh, uh, astronauts and uh, ground flight controllers. Uh, the robot equipped a uh, special camera and uh, controlled by the ground. Uh, using that robot, uh, flight controllers always uh, observe uh, how astronaut is working and uh, if necessary, they can help, uh, help uh, astronaut jump. <laughs> Екатерина Белоглазова, Russian Space. Антон, I wanted to congratulate you on your award. It must have been very pleasant just before your flight. And I wanted uh, you to tell us a little bit about uh, the Russian science program. And also I wanted to ask, where did you train? And uh, in conclusion, why did you decide to be a cosmonaut, and when and what did you expect from your first flight? Thank you for a good question. <coughs> yes, indeed. Uh, my youngest daughter, she is 11 now, but she was six uh, during the time of my first flight. She said, oh, my father is uh, just uh, tumbling around in space. And what I would like to convey to people on the ground is what we are doing on the space station, what kind of um, science program we are doing, the experiments that we conduct, and how useful they are. And um, also we want to show that we do have fun there. We have a balance between work and play. And um, when I first flew, there were 40 experiments on the station. Now there are more than 60, and there will be more added. And uh, we always need more hours in the work week. It's just not enough to work Monday to Friday, so we do extra work on the weekend. When we are in space, we want to work on not 100 percent, but maybe 101 percent. If we have a task to perform, it will be executed. And the experiments, usually it's just not one person, not one PI. There are hundreds of people usually who worked on preparing the experiment for us so that we can take it into space and uh, perform the experiment. And we try to do as much as we can during our flight. Uh, as you said before, we are going to have an EVA go outside the station. We are going to exchange an electronics unit in our satellite antenna. And uh, this particular hardware was installed 17 years ago on the service module. And of course, it's getting older. At the time, we did not have enough um, financing to launch our own satellites into space. Now we do, and we need uh, new electronics for that antenna. So my task and Alexander Misurkin's task will be to swap the electronics unit in the antenna. Of course, it will not be as heavy as it is on the ground, but we will have to loosen and then fasten lots of different fasteners, nuts and bolts. In 17 years uh, that the antenna was on the station, of course, um, they were exposed to space conditions and we have lots of different tools to use to loosen them. And uh, if one doesn't work, we'll try another. If another doesn't work, we'll take the third one. 
and we are determined to perform our task successfully. And when we are done, we will have Russian segment communication with the ground when we are not uh, within uh, direct Russian ground uh, AOS. Right now we are using U.S. assets and hopefully we are going to rely on our own assets in the future so we can talk to you more often. And did you train for that? Yes, we did. We trained for the antenna work in GCTC. Unfortunately, our lab module is not um, being used yet. But um, we have a responsibility to do, myself and Alexander Misurkin, and we will do it. And uh, I have to tell you, you will be happy that you chose us to do it. It's absolutely amazing and, uh, and truly an honor to actually be fulfilling that, that dream uh, with all of you. Being my first flight, I expect to do a lot of learning and to, uh, to do a lot of new types of work for the first time. But mostly, I'm excited to work with the hundreds of people, thousands of people on the ground uh, every day as we work to make our, our four to six month expedition uh, a huge success. I'm expecting uh, lots of lots of work on orbit, including uh, sciences and uh, medical research is using uh, astronaut body. Uh, but most of all, uh, as Anton uh, mentioned, we have a uh, Russian EVA uh, planned. And uh, since we have only two cosmonauts on orbit, I will be the person who help uh, suit up the cosmonauts. So I'm, uh, uh, looking for the uh, working uh, uh, with uh, cosmonauts and uh, working uh, on the Russian spaces. Thanks a lot. But why did you want to become an astronaut? I was working in Japan Navy as a medical doctor. And uh, uh, as a medical officer in Navy, I, my specialty was uh, underwater activity, underwater medicine. Living underwater or activity in the uh, underwater is very, very similar to space work or uh, space station, life in space station. Uh, that's why I got interested in the astronaut job. Thank you. Victoria Tarkova, Izvestia. Anton Nikolaevich, question to you. Are you concerned about uh, space flight because there's always a lot of unknowns there, including different kinds of microbes and bacteria? Very good question. What we are afraid of. Our president, Mr. Putin, asked, uh, dear cosmonauts, what are you afraid of in space? So I said, yes, we are, of course, afraid of something. We are human beings. But I'm afraid only of one thing, to do something wrong, to break something, to do something wrong with an experiment. So I would like to try and do the best I can to show that uh, the training we have undergone for years was not for nothing. So this is the scariest thing I can think of, is not to justify the hopes of hundreds of people who helped us get here. But um, there are some experiments that are only done once uh, and uh, you cannot redo them, and that's why we have to be very careful. And um, after every flight, uh, when I return home and I look into people's eyes, I'm glad to see that I justified their hopes. 
and I can look them straight in the eye and know that I did my job well. All the rest is just uh, imagination, as far as you can let it go. Go ahead, Space News. Evgeny Rashkov. The first question is to Anton Nikolaevich. During your first flight, you had an EVA. During the second flight, you did not have an EVA. And now you will have an EVA. And of course, your body remembers uh, the feeling you had. And my first question is, are you ready for it? And uh, my second question is to Kanai-san, the Japanese astronaut. I understand you got a lot of help from uh, other Japanese astronauts. How much did it help you? Thank you. Going into open space, of course, uh, it's a, a difficult job, and when we watch movies about space, we can see people in spacesuits there, and uh, don't uh, rely on the movies. It's very different in real life. We have to prepare ourselves on the ground for a long time, and then you have to continue training on the station. So it is not just donning a suit and going out into space. We have a lot of experience from other cosmonauts who did uh, extravehicular activity. And uh, it's a lot of work. It's physical stress and it is psychological stress. And you have to really prepare for it. And I have good impressions from my previous EVA, and I will be happy to do it again. I'm sure I will do a good job, and my body will remember what to do. And of course, we have simulators that prepare us for all activities that we'll have to do on the station. And as Kanai san said, he was working underwater with underwater activities and it's uh, somehow similar the same processes only just the other way around so people who do diving they understand it's approximately the same thing as going out into space the same laws apply to the human body, just uh, 180 degrees difference. All the cosmonauts are trained to go into space, and on February 2nd, we are going to do our extravehicular activity with Alexander Mesurkin, so you are welcome to watch. We'll see you then. Thank you for asking. And um, yes, uh, my colleague Japanese astronauts uh, who, who flew uh, before on Soyuz vehicle helps me a lot and also uh, gave me a lot of advices. But it's not from uh, Japanese experienced astronauts. Just like uh, Anton always uh, helps us, uh, many, many NASA astronauts and Russian cosmonauts uh, gave us uh, great advices and uh, helps uh, all the time. And this is, I think, to me, this is uh, the beauty of the international cooperation. And uh, the skills and the experiences from uh, the uh, senior astronauts, cosmonauts, is uh, not just for uh, that, that, that person or that country, it's for everybody uh, in the world. So uh, uh, after the mission, I hope uh, I will share uh, my uh, skills, experiences, uh, anybody in the world. Спасибо. Dear friends, I want uh, MHK company to have an opportunity to ask questions in Japanese. 
Go ahead, please. Thank you. The first question is uh, about the, uh, the, the last training uh, final exam yesterday and uh, the feeling uh, right now and the uh, expectation for the uh, following mission. Honestly, I got uh, quite relieved uh, because we have finished the old training here for all two year training here. Uh, but uh, our final goal or uh, our uh, purpose is, of course, the success of the mission. So from now on, we have to, or I, I have to uh, work harder and uh, complete the mission. And uh, I'm expecting uh, lots of uh, work on orbit, especially because I'm a medical background. Uh, I'm looking for the, to do uh, lots of uh, researches and uh, scientific experiments. And the second question is uh, the communication from the space station with uh, family members and uh, girlfriends. Uh, I have a uh, fiancé and uh, there's nothing different from other crew members. I, I can phone call to her and uh, I can do a, a weekly uh, teleconference with her. Uh, also, uh, email is uh, also available. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the questions.